use a highlighter. Oh. So. Does your um, does your PDF thing have highlighter? Yep. I need 11 by 17. I mean, it's great. For that kind of stuff. We don't have to stay in the same house for that stuff. Yeah. No. no. Certain things I just don't have paper. Scripture's error. Some things you can change. Yeah. Yeah. But your counter's <laughs> error. Why can't you look at okay. the same? Well, if Liz says it, it never been true. Yeah. It is 7 o'clock. We do have a quorum. We'll call them city council meeting order. First item on the agenda is invocation given by Councilman Ferguson and the mayor and the pledge to both the American and Texas flags uh, led by Mayor Pro Tem Durham. Would you please rise and bow your heads for a moment of silent prayer? Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one indivisible. We have some proclamations that we'd like to read tonight and, and give to some special people tonight. Uh, first, if I, if I could ask uh, Sherry Gideon and Shelly Kruger to please come forward. You know, we have several different uh, uh, agencies here in our community that do some wonderful work throughout our community uh, every day of our lives. And a lot of it goes unnoticed because we're busy doing things that we normally do in our life. And sometimes we tend to forget some of these special needs that certain people have. And sometimes we don't often recognize those that do serve those people with those special needs and make sure that those needs are being met. We certainly want to recognize the two of you tonight for the great work that you and your organization does for the children in our community here in Denton County. So with that, I'm going to do this proclamation in which one of you would like to, or both of you, if you'd like to, say a few words and tell us a little bit more expand about the cost. I see which one's going to get to do that right now. I, I noticed that <laughs> This is a proclamation to CASA, Denton County. Whereas child victims of abuse and neglect need and deserve support and assistance to help them cope with the tragedies in their young lives. And whereas National Child Abuse Prevention Month in April offers us all the opportunity to promote and support programs that offer protection <coughs> and safety for our community's children. And whereas court appointed special advocates of Denton County, CASA, has been providing important life altering services to children in Denton County who have been removed from their homes due to abuse or neglect for 20 years. 
and whereas 596 children from Denton County were in foster homes or residential treatment centers in 2011 due to abuse or neglect, and whereas Louisville, Texas is a place where citizens truly care about each other and work as a community dedicated to protecting our youth and helping them thrive and survive the horrors they have experienced, and where it, it takes commitment from all individuals and organizations in a community working together to surround these children with positive relationships and experiences, love, guidance, and protection. Now, therefore, I, Dean Euchert, Mayor of the City of Louisville, in honor of all children in Denton County, do hereby proclaim the month of April 2012 as Child Abuse Prevention Month and the year of 2012 as the year of CASA in the city of Louisville and urge all citizens to participate in the activities and functions sponsored by CASA in April and throughout the year to promote the well-being of children and family, families and to assist in their efforts to eradicate abuse, proclaimed the second day of April 2012. Give them a big round of applause. Thank you. So I really didn't plan to say much, but I will say thank you to the Louisville City Council and the people in the community that support CASA. We actually got our first funding from, from Louisville 20 years ago, and CASA has managed to become a really important thriving entity in our community today and we're happy to be able to help serve the children in your community and we do that through volunteers and I never pass up a moment to say if you're interested in volunteering for CASA all you need to do is check out our website or give us a call and we'll put you to work. Thank you. Thank you. It's so so one of the additional reasons I'm so proud to live in this community because we have been leaders in, in the county in making sure that we support these agencies which do so much <coughs> for our citizens here, in our, citizens here in our community. And our next proclamation, if I could have both uh, Chief Kerbo and Chief Tittle to please come up and join me. This is a very special proclamation that we want to give to someone right now. And the reason I've asked both of our chiefs to come forward is because they deal with them and their services and these people on a day-to-day -day basis. So right now, I'm going to ask Chief Kerbo to come forward and he's going to give us a little bit of heads up exactly how they interact with these people every day. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> what we're talking about is telecommunicators or those dispatch folks that are in our dispatch center, 911 center. They support both police and fire. And so on behalf of the fire department and the police department, we want to personally say how much we appreciate what you guys do each and every day. You know, when there's an I-35 wreck, one guy, don't pick up the phone and call in, everybody with a cell phone does, and these folks have to field that and, and manage those resources to help protect our safety in our community every day. So from the bottom of our hearts, thank you guys. Mayor? Thank you very much, Chief. So now, if I could, if I could have, uh, we have Tiffany Martinez. Is there, what about these other young ladies that are with you? I think so too, we just didn't have their name. If y'all would come forward too. Yeah. Ah, come on down. You need to get this award. You need to share in this proclamation, please. Come over and stand next to these chief people that you work with every day. Thank you, I want to say thank you so much for thank what you, you do, how much we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much for what you do. We appreciate it. And thank you so much. We appreciate it. You know, uh, I've been in their facility several times and watched these people work. And as Chief Kerbo was saying, sometimes when you get flooded with calls, you don't have time to panic or think, you've got to do it, react, and it's got to be an instinct sometimes, and we appreciate greatly what you do and the people that you work with do, because most of the time it's a life-threatening thing that they are dealing with, and no telling, there's countless number of lives that you ladies have saved and the people you work with have saved, we greatly appreciate that. <coughs> Whereas thousands of dedicated public safety telecommunications personnel serve citizens every day by answering telephone calls for police, fire and emergency medical services and by dispatching assistance as quickly as possible and whereas public safety telecommunications personnel are the vital link between the people calling for help and the agencies which assist them and whereas public safety telecommunications are professionals who behind the scenes and often unrecognized actions are responsible for helping protect people and save lives 
Now, therefore, I, Dean Euchert, Mayor of the City of Louisville, Texas, do hereby proclaim the week of April 8th through April 14, 2012, as National Telecommunicator Week in the City of Louisville and urge all citizens to honor telecommunicators and to recognize the crucial role they play in our city, proclaimed the second day of April 2012. Let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, the City Council. It's a pleasure and a privilege to serve our community, and uh, thank you very much. <laughs> and could I ask Ann Wigan to please come up and join me now, please, ma'am? Hello, Ann. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. For those of you who don't know, Ann runs the city. <laughs> <laughs> because she does such a wonderful job at the library and with all the facets that touch our community with the library that just branches out all over this community, we kind of say she runs the city. She's kind of the mother of the city, I guess we'd say. Young mother of the city. <laughs> but we do appreciate all that you do, Ann. You do a wonderful job, and this woman lives and breathes that job. She lives and breathes the library and, and all the people that work with her and the people that she says is what really makes her job is seeing these people touched and their lives changed by what they see and find at our library. So with that, whereas libraries have historically served as our nation's great equalizers of knowledge by providing free access to all, whereas libraries work to meet the changing needs of their users, including building collections, expanding outreach services, and increasing programming, Whereas our nation's libraries provide a forum for diverse ideas and points of views that help us better understand each other and ourselves. Whereas libraries are trained, librarians are trained professionals helping all ages and backgrounds find and interpret the information they need to live, to learn, and to work in a challenging economy. Whereas librarians design and offer programs to meet their community's economic needs, providing uh, residents with resume writing classes, introductory computer instruction, and job-seeking re resources. Whereas libraries are part of the American dream, places for <clears throat> education, opportunity, and lifelong learning. Whereas libraries, librarians, library workers, and supporters across America are celebrating National Library Week now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Dean Euchert, Mayor of City of Louisville, proclaim the week of April the 8th through 14, 2012 as National Library Week. And I encourage all of our residents to visit the library this week to take advantage of the wonderful library resources available at your library. You belong at your library. Thank, Thank you, you very Dean. Much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mayor, and also thank you to all the council. It's your support that gives the library the opportunity to serve. And I'll just share with you a couple of things I want you to be aware of. Mondays through Thursdays and Saturdays, we serve every one of those days more than 1,000 persons from this community. In the last 18 months, the online electronic resource usage has gone up. 185 percent those are your monies to serve everyone thank you very much you know it's amazing my my assistant uh, she's been with me 18 years now and, and she went through college and then she got her master's degree in uh, english literature and the entire time when she went to north texas she said she would come to our lewisville library to use it she lives in denton but she'd come down to our lewisville library and use it she said it was so much easier, so much more accessible, and she loved it. If she had been in our library, she would have never made it. Next item on the agenda is Visitor Citizens Forum. At this time, any person with business before the council not scheduled on the agenda may speak to the council 
No formal action can be taken with these items at this meeting. I did not have any cards filled out to speak. Next item is consent agenda. All the following items on the consent agenda are considered to be self-explanatory by the council and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or citizen so request. For a citizen to request removal of an item, a speaker card must be filled out and submitted to the city secretary. I will say that there were a couple of uh, uh, scripter errors made on the minutes and those will be corrected. Other than that, everything was uh, reported okay in the workshop session. Uh, Councilman Vaughn. Mayor, I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Vaughn to approve the second, I mean, approve the uh, consent agenda. A second by Councilman Grinna. Any discussion? All in favor? No. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item five is consideration of a variance to the Louisville City Code for a temporary sales and marketing office at King's Grant Single Family Residential Development located at Myra Vista Drive and Yacht Club Road as requested by Public Homes and represented by Wes Homemeyer uh, Resource Planning for the development. Pulte Homes is currently developing an 85 unit single family residential project on an 18.362 acre property zone TH2, TH2 located at the northeast corner of Myra Vista Drive and Lake Ridge Road. A variance is being requested to place a temporary sales and marketing office on their site for the purpose of pre-sales for a period not to exceed 12 months or until a certificate of occupancy is issued for the model, whichever occurs first. The City of Louisville bidding, Building Code does not allow portable buildings to be placed in the city for the purposes of sales offices of this type. <coughs> Council has previously approved similar requests on a temporary basis for Heritage Hill in 2003, Ropic Place in 2003, Settler's Village in 2005, and Lynn Square in 2006, and Portrait Homes in 2008. Recommendations the Council consider the requested variance for a period not to exceed 12 months or the issuance of the certificate of occupancy, whichever occurs first as set forth in the caption above. Councilman Ferguson. If there's no one to speak, I move to close the public hearing. It's, it's not a public hearing. It's not. No. I'm sorry. Do you have any action you'd like to no. take on? No. Just move to approve. Second. I have a motion to approve by Councilman Ferguson, a second by Councilman Grinna. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is third and final reading, consideration of ordinance amending Chapter 2, Article 8. Fees 2-201 and Chapter 16, Article uh, 4, Water and Sewer Extension 16-207 of the city, Louisville City Code concerning capital recovery fees for water and wastewater utilities. The ordinance uh, was approved by City Council March 5th. However, three readings are required based on Texas Local Government Code 2012 Edition Chapter 395, an ordinance order or resolution approving the imposition of an impact fee may not be adopted on emergency measure. Councilor? This is an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Louisville, Texas, amending Chapter <coughs> 2, Article 8, Fees, Section 2-201, Exhibit A, and Chapter 16, Article 4, Water and Sewer Extensions, Extension 16-207 of the Louisville City Code by amending the effective date for water and wastewater impact fees and the schedule of capital recovery fees providing a repealer, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. Okay, we're down to reports. Nika? Bob? Nothing. Well, Bob, I'm gonna comment, say that y'all are doing a wonderful job out there at the Toyota Louisville Railroad Park. The, the Panda Cup uh, tournament that's going on is just uh, nothing but kudos to you and your staff. Everybody is just contacting me, telling me what, how wonderful it's going, how marvelous shape our fields are in, and and just everybody's just waiting on my hand and foot. And our bunny breakfast, uh, breakfast with these bunny was just fabulous, big turnout. And everybody, I got there at 6.30 and y'all already had a ton of people there. As you said, I guess they never sleep. So we want to thank them for all they do. Tell them we said thank you very much. Chief? Oh, sir. Linda? Yes, sir. Hope you're feeling better, ma'am. Chief Kerbo? No, sir. Okay. Oh my gosh. I do not have a lake report for you, Mayor, but I think Mr. Backus does. Do you have a phone? <laughs> <laughs>
There are okay, Donna. there are lots of great activities going on at the MCL Grand Theater. Uh, just a couple I wanted to point out. Uh, this week we have opening Annie the Musical. That's put on by the Acting Studio. Uh, the shows start at 7 p.m. each night, uh, plus a 2 p.m. on Saturday, and it does begin Thursday, April the 5th, and runs through the 7th. And then next week, we have the uh, Lake Cities Ballet Theater presenting Insights on Dance, which is really kind of a cool thing where they actually uh, give information on the different types of dance and then someone performs one of the dances. So it should be very interesting and very educational. Thank you, ma'am. Brenda? Please. Yes, sir, Mr. Backus. I have a lake report. The lake elevation is 522.81, so we're about less than a foot away from conservation level, and they will begin uh, not releasing once they get down to the 522 uh, level. So we are full going into summer. Well, tell Carol you did an admirable job, but we sure missed her. <laughs> <coughs> Councilman Durham? Nothing, Mayor. Councilman Grana? Nothing, sir. Councilman Gilmore? I'd encourage everybody, um, on the city website, www.cityoflewisville.com, there's um, two sections there you might want to take uh, a couple seconds. One is a community needs assessment. We've talked about that a couple of times, but it's a great way to get some feedback to city staff as we look forward for especially funds uh, like the CDBG. Also, the code red emergency, uh, the city has gone to a new code red system, um, and this one is uh, more cost effective but it does require that you re-enroll. So if you'd hop on there and put on your phone number or your email, it's a very effective uh, tool for our police, our fire, and our emergency service folks to uh, get the word out. Uh, it's very, very useful. That's all I have, Mayor. Mr. King, no, sir. I'm glad you're feeling better also, sir. Thank you. Councilman Ferguson. I was gonna congratulate Bob and the, uh, Bob Monahan and the park staff on a fabulous uh, funny bunny. Um, it was, uh, there were a lot of people a lot of people uh, talked to a lot of the vendors there. They were very pleased with the turnout and the response that uh, they received from the folks that were there and looked like they were having a lot of fun. The kids had a lot of fun with the Easter eggs. There was a big long line to get your face painted. Ran out of pancakes at about 10 o'clock, so uh, <laughs> didn't get to feed everybody, but certainly uh, didn't waste any food. And I think we had a real fun day. So it turned out real well, well run, well organized. I think everybody enjoyed it. Councilman Vaughn? Nothing, Mayor. Uh, as we mentioned already, the, uh, the things going out at, uh, mm. at uh, Toyo Lewis Oral Park have been excellent. I also want to uh, commend uh, uh, Lewisville High School and their circle of friends grand ball that was held last Saturday, uh, a week ago Saturday, and just what a wonderful event that was to see so many of the old young people that uh, grow through life sometimes with not the same, uh, same uh, normalities that we do, and it does, in fact, change their lives. So we commend them for their efforts and all those that were involved in it. But that, uh, in accordance with Texas Government Code, Subchapter D, Section 551.072, Property Acquisition, and Section 551.087, Deliberation Regarding Economic mm -hmm. Development Negotiations, will now convene into closed session. Find out why it's closed. We have a uh, addendum that we need to read in accordance with Texas Government Code, Subchapter D, Section 551.071, Consultations with Attorney Pending Litigation, City of Louisville versus the Robert C. Dahl Revocable Living Trust and Robert C. Dahl PR-2008-00179, Ditton County Probate Court. We will now adjourn into executive session.
good light outside. I like that. It's getting there. Call us back in the session. Is any action, yeah. action to be taken, Council? Move to adjourn. Second. Have a motion adjourned by Councilman Gilmore and a second by Councilman Grena. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, officer, for being here. We're Thanks, done. Thanks, sir.